Welcome to worship with St. Stephen Lutheran Church of Silver Spring, Maryland. My name is Pastor Betty Landis. We are so um, grateful that you are worshiping using this offering, and we look forward to finding ways to connect with you no matter where you might be worshiping at this moment. And we pray for God's blessings as we move in uh, the season of uh, Epiphany, ending the season after Epiphany, and uh, set our eye towards the new season. And as we celebrate a very special Sunday, um, hearing the words of God, not only calling Jesus God's beloved son, but remembering that each one of us has been called God's beloved through the waters of baptism. And so now as we continue after the beautiful prelude and we uh, prepare ourselves to move forward into this time of worship, I invite you to take a moment to light a candle, remembering that Christ Jesus is with us through God's word. And we remember our baptism with a bowl of water, if you have that close by. We also invite you during this season to uh, think of other ways as we prepare to be uh, moving into Lent. And we will give more announcements about that uh, at the end of the worship service. So now we take a moment in silence to prepare our hearts, our minds, our bodies for a time of repentance and hearing God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. And let us all say, Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Let us pray together. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Siblings in Christ, how vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We now remind um, you to take time to share Christ's peace, whether it be with someone you are worshiping with right now, whether it be through the miracle of technology and telephones, whether it be just jotting a note to someone who might not have the ability to be with us through technology. I invite you to share Christ's peace. And of course, if you are able to be out and about despite this bad weather, I invite you to share Christ's peace with all you may come in contact with, behind a mask or otherwise. God's peace be with you always. And now we continue our worship with the first hymn, the hymn that we sing together to the accompaniment found on page four of the bulletin uh, that is found below this video. Arise, your light has come.
the prayer of the day. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings, the second chapter. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah descend, ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our Lord will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I wanted to share a little bit about uh, what we will be doing at the very end of our, uh, our worship today and what we invite each one of you to do. There is um, a, a printout that you can print from the bottom of the bulletin. There is a, an Alleluia, uh, a colorful Alleluia that looks a little something like this, but you could make an Alleluia of whatever you would like. And um, what we do at the end of this season, this time after Epiphany, when we're celebrating that God has made known to all the world all of God's love in and through and with Jesus, um, we have a time that is just a, a silly tradition, but it is something that helps us move from one season into the other as we uh, prepare for Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent that begins after Ash Wednesday. We take and we veil our alleluias. We do exactly the opposite of what we hear God did in this gospel reading today when God unveiled all the glory of God that was found and was to be seen and understood and made clear by God through Jesus. And so as we prepare this time of, this, of journeying in Lent where we, 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 we go into more of a quiet time, we go into more of a reflective time, we go into a time where we really think through what it means to repent and to um, uh, renounce the things that are not of God. And sometimes that means giving up something, sometimes that means taking on a spiritual discipline in a more intentional way. Sometimes it just means being quiet and letting God's word and God's presence really be made clear to us during this time of Lent as we prepare for the great three days and the wonderful celebration where we bring the Alleluia's out again, and that is Easter. So even though the, the days, the Sundays in Lent are still little celebrations of Easter, little Resurrection Sundays, uh, the 40 days of Lent, we, we take and we, we veil the Alleluia. We, we fold it up and we hide it somewhere. Now, since I've been here as the, the new pastor at St. Stephen, I haven't been able to be with you in this beautiful worship space to, to sing the Alleluias and to use our bodies and to, uh, to dance and to pray and to really um, show God how much we praise and, and love God. But I'm going to ask that you join me in um, taking a moment to to find a place here in this special sanctuary, in this place where we will be gathered together again um, in a safe and healthy way. And so I'm going to fold up the Alleluia and I'm going to place it back here where we hear the word of God proclaimed, where our lectors and our assisting ministers, as they've done so beautifully over these months that we've been apart, have led our worship. I'm going to put that Alleluia there. So I'm hoping whoever's seeing this will help remind me. I might forget and help me remember on Easter Sunday, whether we're here in this space or not, that we bring that out and we reveal the Alleluias. So um, 
Thank you for taking time to do that in your homes, taking time to do that in maybe the place that you set aside for your space to worship. Um, take, take a moment to either veil a candle or take and print off the Alleluia and put it away and bring that out as a, as a way of, of physically showing that we are moving into this time of more quiet, reflective time and that we will together unveil the Alleluias to celebrate when Easter arrives. God's blessings to you as we journey through this transition time into the new season of the church year. Grace to you and peace from our transforming triune God through Christ Jesus' never failing faithfulness. Amen. It didn't seem like it was that far up, but our big bus parked at the bottom of Mount Tabor and a smaller van-like bus hauled us the rest of the way. We read the scripture passages from Mark, Matthew, and Luke a little ways away and, and prayed together under a pagoda. It was cloudy, almost like a low-hanging cloud cover. But as we all dispersed to explore this holy site, the sun broke through the clouds and the whole area seemed to transform before our eyes. The flowers that were blooming seemed brighter, the colors seemed brighter. The vista that we were overlooking seemed clearer. The church that had been built there was more beautiful by the bright sunlight. It was such a powerful memory that I, I catch my breath every time I think about our early morning visit to that high mountain believed to be where Jesus, Peter, James, and John went that day. Context is everything. The day before we visited Mount Tabor, we had been in one of the most violently disputed areas of the West Bank, Hebron the place where a good rabbi friend of mine who had lived many years in Israel and loves Israel, but also is passionate about human rights for Palestinians, told me one day that she will never return to that city because of how she was treated by fellow Jewish people when she was there the last time. We had carried all of what we had seen and had tried to process stemming from the palpable religious anger, hatred, and violence that had occurred there over the years to that stunning aha moment the next day up on the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm pretty sure the way our ever-changing schedule worked out wasn't a coincidence. It was what we needed. It was the midpoint of our trip. It was like refueling the gas tank for the countless remaining mind-blowing places, people, and policies we would be experiencing on our tri-narrative trip to the Holy Land. So I invite you this day to think about the context of this Markham passage. We have jumped in our times of reading from Mark during this season after Epiphany from chapter one all the way to chapter nine. But we remember that chapter nine is right in the middle of, gospel, of Mark's gospel. Some say there is exactly the same number of verses before the story of the transfiguration as there is after the story of transfiguration in Mark. Here today, you might have heard, we start by, by hearing about six days later. You see, it's been six days since Peter had rebuked Jesus, and in turn, Jesus had rebuked Peter, calling him Satan for setting his mind not on divine things, but on human things. Six days since Jesus first taught them about his coming suffering, death, and resurrection. Six days of silence in Mark. Given how immediate everything seemed to unfold in Mark's telling, 
That six days of silence must have been an eternity for Peter, James, and John, not to mention all of the other disciples. Six days to ponder Jesus' strong response to Peter's pushback. Six days to let it sink in that Jesus will be rejected, murdered, and rise again after three days. Six days to struggle with the fact that nothing Jesus promised matched with what they had earlier been taught about the Jewish Messiah. Who was this guy, Jesus? And what is he saying? Deny ourselves? Disown what we've earned? Who we are? How we succeed? Why we live? Lose our lives for his sake? Six days to be anxious and in agony of unknowing. And then he picks these three disciples to have this aha moment. It is a very clear message that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law present in Moses and the prophets present in the greatest prophet, Elijah. A clear message that God will break through all our foolish misunderstandings and desires to control God's revealing ways that Peter so bumblingly made clear as well. A clear message that God's voice can be heard through the cloudy, terrifying times of human life. A clear message that Jesus does not leave us on the mountaintop or in mountaintop times, but journeys with us down the mountain to the cross and through the empty tomb. As we near the time, we will mark, and yes, we will mark with ritual, one year of responding to, struggling with, and living in the midst of this pandemic. We have been reminded today of the core of discipleship. It's not the building or the pastor or the traditions or the programs or even money. We have been reminded throughout this whole year it's not whatever tent we may want to erect to hold on to what we think is good for us. We have been reminded throughout this year that it is God's mission unleashed in Christ Jesus, not long ago, but right now when it seems like the clouds couldn't be thicker. It is dying to whatever gets us stuck in order to live for Jesus' sake and, as Jesus demonstrated, for the sake of others, especially those who are most vulnerable, those who are most unlike us, those who won't be able to scratch our back after we scratch theirs. Many of us are feeling so stuck because we so long to go back to the way it was before. Yet many of us are also realizing what was before wasn't truly life-giving to most. What if, instead of looking back, God is revealing a massive shift in what it means to be forward-looking Jesus followers? A member of a former church I served got the giggles every time I mentioned her name, but the faithful religion writer, Phyllis Tickle, got it right, even though she didn't live to see this latest massive shift we are experiencing in these pandemic times. She wrote and she studied and she proposed that we are living in a time of great emergence a true transfiguration, as it's translated from Greek, a metamorphosis of the, of the Christian church, disciples of Jesus, followers of the way, the body of Christ. Some of us are being called to stay in the six days of silence. Some of us are journeying up 
the mountain. Some of us see the metamorphosis happening right before our eyes. Some of us are still trying to use old traditions for something really, really new. Some of us are terrified. Some of us are overshadowed. Some of us are hearing God's voice reassuring us and directing us to listen to Jesus. What is God giving us despite this horrible time of pandemic? I pray it is as Phyllis Tickle wrote in one of her last poems. Everyone assumes that the perfumes of August are the work of springtime's buds aging into blooms. But the fading rose in her dying knows it is the joy of ceasing that distills perfume. It is the joy of ceasing that distills perfume. No matter where some of us may be in this emerging time, all of us have Jesus journeying with us as we've been forced to cease. No matter how many prophets of this world might try to frighten us, that there's not enough for us all to live sustainably together. We follow the wisdom of Elisha's example. We keep moving on, yet to say to Jesus, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. We boldly ask the Holy Spirit to keep granting us a double share of Jesus' spirit. We humbly tear our clothes in grief and repentance when it seems we can no longer see Jesus for, he, for who he truly is, how he truly lived, why he truly died, and where he truly keeps being raised up and calling us beloved. Today we celebrate our annual move from an unveiled time of alleluias, praising God for enlightening the world with Jesus, to the muted veil of Lenten reflection, repentance, renunciations, and renewal. May the Holy Spirit keep us open to the ways Jesus' transfiguring journey with and through us inspires, encourages, and strengthens us for whatever may lie ahead. Veiled and unveiled, God keeps beloving and coming to us so that we serve all people following the example of Jesus and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. May it be so. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this last Sunday after Epiphany, let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need, responding to each petition with the phrase, Alleluia, Amen. O God of light, we pray for communities of faith around the globe, for our own congregation, for all pastors and deacons and music ministers, and for all Christians who cannot gather for communal worship. Show us your face in the darkness and speak your word of power to all the faithful. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O morning star, we pray for the earth, for life forming in the dark earth and ocean depths, for creatures seen and unseen, and especially for the animals who require cold and ice. Give us your spirit's guidance in our stewardship of the planet. Hear our prayers, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O Son of Righteousness, we pray for our nation's elected leaders, for our Congress, for attorneys and juries, and for all who work for justice in our land. Give to them all integrity and service and courage to choose what is right. We pray for our citizenry, that prejudice cease, that resentment about the election wane, and that violence be averted. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. Beautiful Savior, we pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for medical workers, and for all who await the vaccine. We pray for those enduring famine, for those experiencing homelessness, for the people of Yemen, and for all who live in war zones. We pray for all who are ill, for all who receive no medical care, and for all of on our prayer list, and for those we name here before you. Heal them with your loving might. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. Love divine, we pray for those who, especially on this Valentine's Day, feel lonely, for those who are abandoned, and for those who must live apart from their dear ones, especially for the children separated from their parents at our nation's borders. Embrace all who are alone with your care. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. Shine, Jesus. Shine also on me and receive the petitions of my heart. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. We remember before you all who have died in the faith, especially the missionaries Cyril and Methodius and the reformer Martin Luther, and for those who we name here before you. Be with us in our every darkness until at our end we join with the saints in your everlasting light. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O Holy Trinity, Light Creator, Light of Light Begotten, 
and light revealer. Receive our praise and hear our prayers for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus keeps teaching us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts we have been given, I invite you to join me in this offering prayer found on page 12 of the bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. As I indicated earlier, we are moving from this season into the season of Lent, and I wanted to remind you that um, we will have two offerings for adults. One is on Wednesday evenings. We will be using a book, Plenty Good Room, and we have copies of this book available for anyone who would like to join. We will be um, conducting this uh, Wednesday midweek uh, from uh, 7.30 to 8.15.
uh, just 45 good minutes to pause and to reflect on a beautiful song that's been a part of our Christian tradition here in the United States, to reflect on scripture and to join one another in pondering how um, God is uh, moving and, and, and encouraging us through this six-week study, Wednesdays in Lent, beginning Wednesday, February 21st, 4th, going all the way through March 31st. And we thank all of the members of St. Stephen who will be leading this time of, of um, music and learning. I also wanted to make sure you know that we have copies of a devotional booklet each day, a, a devotion, a prayer, a time for reflection during Lent. It's called again and again, a Lenten refrain, reminding us that no matter how often uh, we might feel like we are turning away or we might perceive that God's turning away from us, that again and again, God's love finds us, comes to us, strengthens us and gives us grace and gives us the faith to keep on following Jesus' ways. So uh, let us know at the church office or send an email to me or any one of our church council members and we will get these resources to you. If you are a family who has uh, children, school-aged children, I want to let you know that we are preparing little Lenten bags with resources to take you through a Lenten journey for your kids and for parents. Um, there will be a, a flat Jesus in the in the uh, book and the um, the Lenten bag and I, I encourage that throughout the weeks of Lent you take pictures as to where Jesus might journey with you during your time and send them into the church and we will share those in an appropriate way but um, if anybody knows about Flat Stanley there's been a movement in the in the church to kind of take and adopt a flat Jesus and to take pictures send them in and to share in a time of, of uh, with, with uh, a little bit of enthusiasm and with uh, joy, uh, how Jesus keeps journeying with us, especially during this time of Lent. There are other announcements in the bulletin, and today, if you're uh, worshiping with us before noon on uh, Sunday, February 14th, uh, you are invited to join us for a fellowship time. We've placed the Zoom link in the bulletin. We will also have it on the email that will go out with this link to this worship um, page. And it's also found in our e-news under our website uh, tab called e-news. So all are welcome for the time of fellowship. We're going to uh, use it as an opportunity to share and to break up in groups and practice a little bit our use of Zoom as a way of gathering together and, and um, checking in with one another and sharing and building up what it means to be uh, God's people, the body of Christ, during this time when we must stay separated. So I invite you now to turn to the sending blessing that's found on page 12 of the bulletin. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. And at the end of our sending song, which is Alleluia, Song of Gladness, I invite you to go in peace, be the light of Christ, and to find a place to hide the Alleluia until Easter morn, until the first fire of Easter is lit. Thanks be to God for you. We hold you in prayer, and we are um, always um, grateful for this time of worship together with you. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 